According to Tom Lee, Bitcoin will soon reach its all-time high. Christopher Giancarlo says that the CFTC needs to test blockchain. Voyager has revealed plans to launch a zero-fee trading app in quarter four of this year. And Coinbase has integrated with WeGift to launch a gift card to be accepted by over 120 retailers. So to start off today's video, I want to talk about the fact that although the Bitcoin ETF, the Solid X Van Eck one, was not postponed, uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that it won't be postponed. That's not necessarily a bad thing. And it also doesn't mean even if it is, is postponed, the decision will come uh, in 2018. It's very possible that there could be a decision in 2018. And it's also possible that there might not be one. But I also think it's important to maybe not get not get all of our hopes up only for an ETF. Uh, and I've seen some other people saying this as well, but I think it's important to not base the entire future of the next bull run maybe or the next uptrend in crypto, not to base that solely on the ETF. That's bad for a lot of reasons. I mean, imagine if it does not pass, right? And also, I think it would make a lot of people uncomfortable if the only reason that Bitcoin uh, and cryptocurrency as a whole started a new bull run or started to do pretty well was solely because of an ETF. I think what we're seeing now in the market, this recent uptrend that we've been seeing, I do think that one of the reasons uh, we've seen a lot of good volume uh, and we've seen this uptrend is because the possibility of an ETF. I also do think that it's kind of just what TA is predicting. TA can be very self-fulfilling, especially when everybody's looking at the charts and looking for the same things. And I also think there's probably many dozens of other small reasons throughout the entire space that are probably having an impact on this. I don't think it's one thing in particular, but you know, it's very possible this could mainly be because of the Bitcoin ETF talk. So in terms of the overall market, again, today was more of a neutral day. It didn't really go up or down. If we look at the chart here, well, I guess technically it went down a little bit, really very negligible though. This is basically just a neutral day. Again, maybe a day to bring down the RSI a little bit so we can go higher. So far, that's what it's been doing. That doesn't mean it will forever either. But again, something I do like seeing is that we have a lot of coins uh, in the top 10 and a lot of coins outside of the top 10 as well, gaining good percentages uh, besides just Bitcoin. And so that's what we want to see as well. The global market cap still right around 300 billion. We had XLM up over 12% today, currently at 33 cents. Uh, there is some news for that. I want to talk about that very briefly also. So overall, not a super exciting day, but also nothing to panic about. Probably one of the reasons that XLM is uh, doing pretty well today is the fact that Huobi Global launches Stellar on July 25th, which is today. By the time I post this video, it actually might be the 26th. But according to this blog post, Stellar XLM will be launched on Huobi Global on July 25th. XLM BTC pairing and an XLM ETH. So Huobi is also the third largest exchange by trading volume, so that's pre a pretty big deal. Stellar is already on a lot of exchanges, but uh, one of the exchanges that could really benefit XLM is Coinbase. And as we all know, uh, Stellar is being considered by Coinbase. From what I've read though, I believe Coinbase is gonna be looking at basic attention token and 0x first, I believe. And then they'll take a look at the other three cryptocurrencies. Basic attention token and 0x are both the lower market cap coins. So maybe that has something to do with why they're gonna be looking at those first. So I'm sure you're all familiar with Tom Lee. This is an article titled Bitcoin at Future Regulatory Risk, Wall Street's Tom Lee Explains. So Tom Lee is Fundstrat's research head and a Bitcoin strategist. And in this article, he shares his opinion on Bitcoin's future and where the cryptocurrency uh, will go in the future. He's quoted as saying that until Bitcoin reaches 25,000 US dollars per coin, uh, the price will only increase gradually. He has something to say about the Bitcoin ETF speculation. And according to him, Bitcoin will soon witness an all-time high. So Lee is quoted as saying on CNBC that I think once we hold 8,000, meaning 8,000 uh, US dollars per Bitcoin, people will have their sights on something like 10K. But I think the bigger picture is that the narrative of Bitcoin looked bleak for a few months because there were regulatory clampdowns and people thought that the protocol was broken. People were losing interest. I definitely think that's the case. I, d I definitely agree with him on that. But now he's quoted here as saying, I think now we are seeing potential institutional participation again. The potential for an ETF in this is going to help Bitcoin break back to its all time high. So Lee is actually quoted here as saying that he thinks the possibility of an ETF being approved is around 50%, which is obviously lower than some people in the space. 
But Jeff Gilbert of CNBC, who Lee was having a discussion with, said, that's why it's actually a catalyst, because investors are going to realize that we're moving one step closer to seeing other ways for investors to gain exposure. I mean, exchange-traded funds solve a lot of problems for investors. You know, it will not force them to buy ICOs, and it'll take care of the taxes. And so Tom Lee as well, he did predict twenty to twenty-five thousand dollar Bitcoin by the end of this year, and he predicts a ninety-one thousand dollar Bitcoin by the end of twenty twenty. Uh, and and by a lot of people's standards, those are very low estimates. A lot of people are predicting uh, way, way, way higher prices for Bitcoin. I think McAfee's is one million by twenty twenty, uh, and some other more credible people uh, predict similar, but not quite as high as one million by twenty twenty. Although a lot of people do think that a million dollar Bitcoin will be eventual, maybe just not two years or about a year and a half from now. And before we get into more articles, I did want to cover uh, something that I read in a comment. Uh, and it's kind of what I touched on at the beginning of the video as well, to just stay prepared and realistic if an ETF would be rejected. Whether or not it is rejected, I don't think the future of, of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, even just this year in the short term, is really completely dependent on an ETF. I think even worst case scenario, what the Bitcoin ETF could do is just bring people's attention back to crypto and kind of get the, the, the ball moving again for something similar to 2017 or, or much better than 2017. I think at some point in the very near future, maybe like two years max, there will be uh, an event much more insane in terms of gains uh, than 2017. But it's not necessarily guaranteed to happen this year, obviously. But again, it's also very possible that it could happen this year. I wouldn't put all of my hopes into the ETF. It would be awesome if it did go through. It would be awesome if institutions started getting involved in a lot of different ways and the space became filled with excitement again. But even if an ETF is not approved, it's important to still stay excited about cryptocurrency uh, and that there's still plenty of good things in the space and plenty of things to be excited about. And so really quick, this Coindesk article here, published by Wolfie Zhao, uh, Coinbase launches crypto gift card service in Europe. So in Europe, Coinbase is integrated as well as services with WeGift, it's, an, it's a London-based online gift card platform, uh, and you can purchase gift cards through your Coinbase wallet. So effectively, you can buy things with Bitcoin. Uh, and yeah, that's as simply put as I, as I can make it. You can pretty much buy things that you wouldn't otherwise be able to buy with Bitcoin with Bitcoin, essentially. You just have to buy the gift card first with Bitcoin through your Coinbase account. And so far, the service is available in the UK, France, Spain, the Netherlands, and Italy. Uh, there's over 120 retailers that you can buy these gift cards for. Uber is one of them, Google Play is as well. So there are a lot of big names and a lot of uh, ways that cryptocurrency is able to interact in one way or another, again, as a payment, uh, specifically through Coinbase. So I think that's cool. The licensed US crypto asset brokerage named Voyager has revealed plans to launch a zero fee mobile trading app in the fourth quarter of this year. Uh, the new platform intends to bring investors a single access point to trade and manage their assets across multiple crypto exchanges without charging fees or setting minimums for orders. Voyager's co-founder, Stephen Ehrlich, was quoted as saying that crypto assets are empowering a new generation of investors. And yeah, I think this is a trend that's gonna continue. It even has some stats here on Coinbase and how insane Coinbase has been growing. Whether or not you love or hate Coinbase, uh, it is still incredibly dominant, especially in the US in terms of getting your hands on cryptocurrency. And again, whether you, you do like it or not, they are making crazy moves. The biggest, I think, recently, uh, besides the fact of the five coins they're considering adding, Coinbase Custody, I really think, is going to be a huge way for the mainstream adoption of cryptocurrency going forward and services like that. And so Chairman Christopher Giancarlo of the CFTC, or the Commodities Future Trading Commission, he's been an advocate for crypto for at least a few months now. I think it was back in February at the hearing that he was really he was really showing his advocacy for cryptocurrency. And he won a lot of people over in the crypto field for standing up for cryptocurrency and the younger generations. But he's also quoted here saying, we're falling behind. Just two days ago, the Bank of England announced that they're putting a new bank to bank payment system in the UK, and it's going to be blockchain compliant. And they've had the last four years to participate in all these blockchain beta tests that we've not been able to participate in. So I feel like we're four years behind because we do not need to test it. We need to see how it can help us do a better job as regulators. So just good news in the sense that there are people in our government that are, are interested in working and trying to learn about cryptocurrency and do not want to just shut it down. Uh, unlike unlike uh, Mr. Sherman that we saw about two weeks ago, uh, there are other people on the, on the opposite side of that, people who support it and they want to see where it can take us.